Hey guys, I'm back. You guys sick of new knives yet? I hope not, because I'm not sick of new knives yet. But today, we're looking at some Krieger knives. We're looking at Krieger knives because in the last Shit Hits the Fan Box, we got this little Krieger knife, which I have been really, honestly, very impressed with. I had not heard of this brand before. And you know when people talk about the that the boxes are never worth the money and, and this and that. Hi, Tato. I always like to say that one of the values in the box to me is the chance to discover new things that I probably would not have discovered or found otherwise or been likely to give a chance. And this knife is is one of exactly one of those kinds of items that I probably would not have either found or tried out otherwise. Now this particular Krieger knife is a reproduction of a German issued military knife that was around World War One, World War II time frame. It is, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good knife. It, I've been carrying it around, I've been using it. My one complaint is that there's no pocket clip, but it's got a really great lockback design. I hate lockbacks, I do. But this lockback is easy to use, it's convenient, it's super slim, it's lightweight, and it's actually made really well, and the blade is great. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna give a couple more Kriegers a try. Uh, honestly, they, they look a little cheap. They look a little, um, I guess the only way to describe it is they look a little m y but I decided based on how well this one was put together and it performed, I'd, I'd give some other ones a try. So I picked two of them out and they're here and we're gonna take a look at them. And we'll also look at the specs um, on this one again, even though we looked at it in the Shit Hits Fan box when it got here. But first, let's do some shout-outs, because our shout-out list has grown again quite a bit. So today, we are thanking some viewers by giving shout-outs to Tenor Hunter, Joshua Harrison, Sam Rocks, Macho Drop 276 Bick. I'd love to know the backstory behind that one. That'd be cool. Remy Brazel, and then Charlie the Dog. Specifically was asked for a shout out for Charlie the dog. And you know what? We love dogs around here. We love all of our pets. So there you go. Thanks guys for watching this channel and for uh, supporting all the fun and crazy things that we do around here. And we will work through more of that shout out list on an upcoming future video. By the way, I just, I, I'm into all kinds of new knives lately. Um, I'm really excited about them. There are a lot of other videos besides just new knives coming out in the near future. Just so you guys know. But let's get into these Krieger knives and looking at them. So starting with the one that started off my new kind of like for this brand. So this one, this model is Held and Rand. I guess is what it's called. Um, like I said, a repro of an actual like German issued knife and Germans make their equipment very, very well. So this one I already kind of said this, but I'll recap. About a three and a half inch blade. It's really nice. It's a good slicing blade. It's a good utility blade. It's got a beautiful finish on the blade. Um, it's very lightweight. It's, it, it is a utility knife. I mean, it is. It's not made to look pretty. It's not made to look fancy. Um, it doesn't have fancy features. It is, and, and in fact, it's sometimes I hate that this little loop will get caught up here and I'll go to close the blade and I have kind of caught the end on it a couple times but it fits in a pocket it disappears in your pocket in fact it's so slim it's so lightweight sometimes I, don't, I just forget it's even there things I don't like I don't like the nail nick I would love for to have a thumb stud so I've ordered one of those little screw on thumb studs from USA Knife Maker I would love for it to have a pocket clip so it didn't just get lost in a pocket I would love to have a little easier access to it. I'm gonna figure out how to put a pocket clip on in a, in a convenient way. Cause if you look, there's there's not a lot of space in there to mount screws or anything. And I suppose I could weld one on, but I don't want to permanently put it on there. You know, I, I want to be able to take it off again. But I would love to be able to put a pocket clip on this thing. I think that would make it almost perfect for a really lightweight, slim EDC knife. Thumb stud and a clip on this thing. And I understand they don't have it because the original knife didn't have it, but that would make it phenomenal. This is a really great knife. And I've been carrying it for just a little bit, just general general use stuff. 
and it's been just a performer. It's great. Just opening packages, opening oranges for the boys, uh, some general cutting stuff. Um, I love this knife, and this is the first lockback knife I've ever really loved, and I love that the lock is just so easy to get to. It's not your standard lockback where it's just all inset, and some of them are just really hard to, to unlock and get that tension just right, but this one is, is just the design on it is great. It's so easy, and it, but not to the point where it's going to unlock on you unless you really try. You've got to put some force on it. It doesn't, it doesn't just unlock. But when you want to unlock it, it's so easy to use. I love this knife. So based on this knife, and you know what, I even, like I said, even though we kind of looked at the basics of it and did the edge test and everything, and the shit hits the fan box, and this is after about a week of use and everything, it is still razor sharp. Um, I can't remember if we looked at the exact steel. I know that they say that it's carbon steel, but they don't specify what kind of carbon steel it is. But that carbon steel they're using holds an edge beautifully. Uh, after a week of just general use, not, nothing hard use, nothing crazy, it is still super sharp. It still slices its way through anything. No problem. Beautiful cutting. It's awesome. So, based on the performance of this, I wanted to give some of their other products a try. And so I picked out two. My kind of problem with the rest of them is that they are flashy they I, I was looking for some that looked more utility like like this one and they don't have a lot so here's the ones that I ended up picking out this one I believe is called the maelstrom oh, I'm sorry this is the midnight ecliptic is what this one is called um, and hmm uh, even holding it right now it has kind of a has kind of a cheap feel not cheap in a good way I'm hoping this was not a bad idea, um, but it does have really nicely machined G10 scales, though. Um, you can tell they put some time into it, so it's it's that very fine texture G10, and then it's been CNC'd, so you have these kind of steps on it, and perfectly smooth on the steps. We have a little bit of that texture to it. Looks like you have, what is this? Some kind of aluminum maybe, um, but some kind of metal. I This is obviously not real Damascus, but it's a Damascus pattern that's put on there. Um, general fit and finish actually looks pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Um, I mean, to be real nitpicky, you see there's a little bit of uh, an overbite there with the scale, but nothing, I mean, nothing, you'd really have to look for it. But design-wise, uh, not too bad, I mean, it's not too crazy, it's really not. It's it's not too flashy, everything's kind of subdued. I, I picked it because it's like a nice kind of subdued look. It's got a deep carry clip that puts most of the knife in your pocket. Centering is, could be better, not too bad. But, I mean, nothing's rubbing, at least. But centering could be better, but it's, you know, it's not too bad. Off just a little bit. Now, this one has a spring assist. And it's a pretty good spring assist. It's not too tight that it's inconvenient or hard to close it back up with one hand. So, nice one-handed operation. I'm not entirely sure what the coating on the blade is, but it's kind of a nice matte coating. It's it's not too shiny. It's not that kind of uh, um, M Tech has this glossy paint that they coat their blades with, and this in the light yeah has a little bit of a reflection. But I think if you've seen that kind of gloss black coating that's on a lot of cheap knives, you know what I mean. Uh, this has a kind of a feel to it. You can feel it. It's like a a, a nice coating. Yeah one little trademark on there and then made in China um, good little drop point shape this also would be about you know I'll put the specs of course but about three and a half inches on that not much about average you know width on the liner lock for a knife like this 
One thing I will say is lockup is it's fairly late. It's about 50% already right out of the box. I wonder if I put a white piece of paper behind there, it's easier to see. It's, uh, yeah, can you, it's like already about halfway on that blade. Hmm. But, I mean, the blade is secure. It's in there. And there's probably no way that that lock is going anywhere. And we got to keep in mind that this is a budget-friendly brand, right? So we're not getting, like, like hinderer engineering on it or anything. Um, handle's a little bit small. But it's comfortable. I mean, nothing groundbreaking. It's not a brand new design or anything like that. Let's see if the thumb studs... Deploys just as well with thumb studs as with the flipper. Good spring action, though. Really nice spring action. I'd say it's got a nice look to it. You know, uh, that that kind of fake Damascus overlay is is bugging me. And it looks like you could probably take it off because if you look on this side, you can see that it's tapped right there. That there's screw holes where where this goes in. So I don't know if it's made that you can. I, I don't know if they intended to put that on the other side at one point or something. Um, the clip's not reversible, so it's you know tip down right hand only, but I imagine you could probably take that off if you wanted to and just have the G10, which I think would look a little less cheesy cheap, um, and you wouldn't, I mean, I think I would, I would actually like the look of it more without that on there, but like I said, the action is really nice. Looking in there, it's, it's not bearings, it's just nylon washers, so that spring is really effective at getting that blade out there. I think that there's there's no skeletonization on the steel liners, um, but they're they're pretty thin, so I mean weight on it's nice. Let's see if the blade is as good as our little German friend. Hmm. Well, apparently not. This is what I was kind of afraid of. I was afraid that we had one really good one. That's not too bad. All right, not too bad. It's it's not as smooth as this guy. And the cut's not quite as clean, but it's not bad. I mean, it, it's not bad. It's 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 not great. Um, it's kind of a shallow hollow grind. So, I mean, whereas this is just a full flat grind, um, I'm sure that this blade can be, with a minimum of effort, can be honed just perfect. I I would actually still rather carry this and like find a way to put a clip on it and carry this than that. But there's that one. The second one I picked um, is a bit gaudy, I'm going to say it, but, oh wow, it's a lot smaller than I thought. So this is the Maelstrom. I, uh, up front, it is not real Damascus. There's, there's no way this is real Damascus. In fact, yeah, you can tell. So it, you can feel it's like a printed Damascus pattern, and if you look at the edges, the Damascus just stops. It is not real. We knew. I, I knew going into it. There was no doubt in my mind this was not going to be, for the price, this was not going to be a real Damascus knife. Um, so, it's a pattern, but uh, if you're into the look of it, you know, it is what it is. It's an all-steel knife, and the weight reflects it. It's actually not a bad look. It's not, it's not like too gaudy in your face. It's a little gaudy. Um, they put the china right there on the spine so as not to interfere with the pattern. This one is manual. It is not a spring assist. And it's more of an EDC size, I think, than the other two. It's a bit smaller. This one has only one liner on the inside. Let's see, can you see that? And that is just for the liner lock there. It is, it is significantly smaller. I mean, if we compare them, it is a much smaller knife overall. It's actually, I, I, for me, this is, this is a bit too small in my hand. It just kind of disappears and I, I don't feel like I get a very good grip on it. But for those of you who like a smaller knife, now, you know, the thing is the shuffle, uh, Kershaw shuffle is a smaller knife, but it just, it seems to fit well in my hand. This 
does I don't know. I just don't like the way it feels overall. But let's you know look at all the features. So fit and finish wise, it's actually finished very well. Everything matches up really nicely. Yes, it's a fake Damascus pattern, but it's it's well done. You know the the finishing on the knife is is nice. You've got kind of a I like the way they have the worn pattern around the edges, um, almost like almost like a little bit of a stone wash around the edges and everything. I like the finish on the clip. We've got a deep carry clip. This is also uh, tip down, right hand only. So if you like anything else, screw you. Nobody cares. Um, a little bit off centered as well, but again, budget friendly brand. This centering is much better on this one than the blue ecliptic. <clears throat> they even went so far as to blew up the screws for you. Not blow up, but blew up. Which actually is not much better than blow up, is it? But um, everything kind of color-wise matches. It's nice. This is another one where they don't really they don't really give you an actual blade steel type. The flipper on this thing is, uh, you know, I guess you could adjust that pivot a little bit if you want. It, no matter what you do, it does not flip. This is not going to be. I mean, you'd have to really break this in, take it apart, oil it, get the tension just right. So forget the flipper. It's going to be a thumb stud knife. Um, it's just, it's a thumb stud knife. It has a flipper for no reason whatsoever. And again, on the blade, you can see it's got the Damascus pattern on the blade, but looking at the edges, it's not real Damascus at all. It does, I mean, it does, it does look nice if you want, if you can't afford real Damascus, but you want that look to it, it's not bad. I've seen fake Damascus look much, much worse than this. And if you look carefully, you can actually see the pattern start repeating in there. Another way to know that it's fake. But I think that this one actually, um, I, I kind of like the look of it, the feel of it a little bit better than this one, even though normally I like a, a bigger knife. I, I don't like the way it feels so small. So the liner lock on this one also, again, a little bit later than I like to see in a brand new liner lock, but is what it is. Budget friendly knife. It's not going to be the finest of engineering. Another nice drop point shape. Hmm. No. Okay, not too bad. Looks like neither of these is as finely refined as this guy, though. And I don't know if it's a product of, you know, it's just easier to, to sharpen and hone a nice straight edge like this than something curved. But um, this one has, you know, this guy came perfect. Love this knife. Love it. Cord cut's not too bad. It's still, it's not as clean and nice and even as our original German repro, but a little bit of effort to get through there, but it's a smaller blade. Um, but overall, you know what? I think for the money spent, if you're looking for a small EDC that's got a little bit of weight to it, it's got a little bit of stylus, it's not bad. It's, it's not too bad. So Krieger has a bunch of knives. They, they are all made in China. You know, it's another one of those um, German names made in China. I, I can I can absolutely 100% get behind this guy. Uh, I can recommend this one any day of the week. I might even get one or two more of these just to experiment with to see how I can mount a clip, see what's involved in taking this little loop off because it just seems to get in the way and, and mess with the design a little bit because I really love this knife. It's simple, it's inexpensive, um, and it's it's effective. It, you know, it reminds me of, of a Higo type knife almost in that it's you know it's small metal frame no clip um it locks which is a difference and you know it's not a slip joint it's not a friction folder but um it kind of i don't know it just reminds me of that a little bit but it's it's this has been since i got it i've loved it to death wanted to try out a couple more of their products not super impressed but you know i'm not totally turned off either you know it's it's like i said it's a budget-friendly brand it's a low-cost knife it's 
we weren't looking at like a high-end ZT or Benchmade or Hinderer or Strider or anything like that. We knew that going in. So, all right, guys. I guess that's about it for uh, the Krieger unboxing today. So, until next time, you guys are all absolutely super awesome. Uh, I'm going to go get another batch of the giveaway prizes packed up and sent out. I've gotten uh, about two-thirds of them all sent out at this point. Um, like I said in another thing, I'm working, uh, getting ready on the international type stuff. I don't remember what video I said this in before, but there are a number of people who have not gotten in touch with me to claim their prizes. Um, a handful. So please review the video for the giveaway the prize announcements make sure that you have gotten in touch with me to claim your prize because in another week or so i'm going to start awarding alternate winners to the people that have not gotten in touch with me uh, just because you know i want to get those prizes to in the hands of people that that entered and stuff so anyway like i was saying you are all absolutely awesome i appreciate every single one of you and i'll be back again real soon